hoping you're having a good time, and we're going to honor some really phenomenal people here tonight who do understand the principles of the American Cowboy and have projected that image around the world with their achievements in the rodeo arena and just in what they've done with their lives. The National Cowboy Museum is about way more than stuff. That was our honoree tonight, Jim Houston. <gasps> Jim Houston has shared a lot as well. He's been not only a champion in the arena, but he's continued uh, to support rodeo, and he's continued to be involved in rodeo, not only as a world champion bareback rider, but with a world champion rodeo company as well. Let's take a look at Jim Houston's life story. One of the most dominant bareback riders of the 1960s, Jim Houston, enjoyed a stellar professional rodeo career. Houston was born in 1940 in Nebraska City, Nebraska, and was raised in Omaha. A chance trip to the Cheyenne Frontier Days Rodeo when he was 10 years old transformed him from a precocious athletic star into a rodeo-obsessed cowboy, determined to make it in the world of the rodeo. The day he graduated from high school, he struck out to work on his riding skills in Cody, Wyoming, where they held rodeos every night. Houston qualified for membership in the Rodeo Cowboys Association in 1961. He qualified for his first national finals rodeo in 1962 and earned the coveted RCA Rookie of the Year title. He credits his mentor, Pete Crump, who took him in hand that year, coached him, entered him, and hauled him between shows. Houston earned eight trips to the national finals, winning the 1964 Bareback Riding World Championship. On his way to the 1965 world title, he suffered injury in the second round on the famous bareback course Come Apart. In spite of severe pain, he managed to ride all 10 head, winning the last round to secure the gold buckle. In 1968, Houston finished second in the world in bareback riding and fifth in steel wrestling, placing him second in the all-around standings right behind Larry Mayhem. After retiring from competition, Houston was the longtime manager of the Cody Knight Rodeo and Jackson Hole Weekly Rodeo. He partnered with Neil Barstow to form the first successful rodeo company of its kind. Houston worked hard as a contestant, but also spent vast hours promoting rodeo as an RCA member, stock contractor, promoter, and ambassador. Jim Houston rode to glory and takes his place in the Rodeo Hall of Fame. It's a proud place for me to be on the stage tonight as you come up to accept this award. And who better to hang it around your neck than that doggone old cop Ross? Crews here that uh, I've got, I want to rec recognize that uh, has always been the pleasure to, to be with and to, and to rodeo with. Uh, to start with, the Pete Crump he took care of me when I was really having a hard time out in California, and uh, he picked me up and he hauled hauled me all year and got me promoted me and everything. And uh, he told me the story that uh, why he kind of did it. He did it to for. Uh, uh, another great bareback rider, Bob Edson, the year before, and he said, uh, why I do it is because uh, Bill Lindemann picked me up when I was about 25 years old and uh, got me going, and that's kind of the way a lot of us did it back in the old days. And so 
I tried to do it a couple of guys, and I got really lucky with with uh, guys like well, Bill Smith and I. We we started together. Bill used to take guys and and get him going, and I got lucky with Jim Ivory, who as soon as I got him going, he beat me. <laughs> and Ace Berry at, at 17, I didn't even know he could rope, and. Uh, he, he got 18 years old, he went to the finals in the bareback ride, and it was really a pleasure. And then we had our bulldog in camp. We got all the Burt Burnett boys over here. C.R. Boucher, he had a great bulldog in camp. And Rick Bradley, a world champion steer wrestler, who grew up and watched him when he was about 10 years old on the fence and, and ended up being a, a fantastic cowboy himself. And Donnie Bowles, and we had a bulldog and horse together. Then I have the Jackson Hole crew over there. Uh, people like uh, Barbara Johnson who helped me out, and, and uh, Phoebe Berry, <coughs> who's the cowgirl right here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had, we just had a lot of fun. Uh, I'm from a farm family and uh, real proud of it. I always wanted to be a cowboy though, but. Uh, recognition of the Foster family there, the four generation farming. And uh, if I hadn't made it in the rodeo, I sure would have been happy to go back to the farm. It worked out. <laughs> uh, my sister got me so many notes I've never seen. Them. <laughs> don't, you, don't you forget to tell this story. You remember how you told about you got to re recognize these people? Yeah. And, uh, and my memory isn't always the greatest, that's for sure. Anyway. I got, I got hooked on rodeo by. <laughs> I, I got I got hooked on rodeo. They sent me and put me on a train to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and uh, I saw my first rodeo there. And I saw these kids riding calves in, in the uh, track. And I I from that day on, I just couldn't believe how much fun it looked. And I went, that's always been in my mind ever since. And, that was kind of my start right there, along with watching Casey Tibbs and Jim Shoulders and Bill Leonard and Harry Tompkins when they'd fly in from, from New York and Boston and to the Omaha Rodeo. And we used to, I've got to tell this story about Casey Tibbs. You bronc riders are going to really enjoy this one. And I don't know if I've told it a lot, but anyway, am I running out of time? <laughs> <laughs> we got a story, but I got to tell this one story about Casey Tibbs. I was 12 years old or so, or 13 maybe, looking at trying to figure out who rode Bronx better than Barebacks and between the big four that they always talked about. And I'll never forget this. This big old Bronx came out there bucking, really, really bucking, and, and Casey either bucked off or, or jumped off, I don't know, but he held on to the rain as he hit the ground. And that horse kept, still kept bucking. And he handed it to the pickup man. <laughs> Beat that, boys. That was, <laughs> that was <laughs> but Anyway, I'm getting crazy. Right? This has been a great honor. I, didn't, I couldn't believe it. Uh, thanks to everybody that's helped me out. My sister, I, I'm not going to get it all. So. <laughs> they told me to get the hell out of here. <laughs>
of 